Hello YouTube! I'm working up to a 3D printer build, but to start, let's make a laser engraver and plotter. This build will be almost entirely from scratch, both mechanically and code, to best get a feel on what works, what's important, and what isn't. I'll share what I've learned as I go. The materials we'll use will include an Adreno Uno to power the steppers, two 28BYJ stepper motors and their two ULN 2003 drivers, a micro servo, pulleys and wheels with the rods for axles and bolts that fit them, some braided fishing line, quarter inch MDF and or PTE sheet, nuts, bolts, and several lengths of aluminum stock. For stability, the frame will be made of aluminum, which I'll drill and bolt together. No hot glue here. Starting with the base idea of how we'll put this together, I lay out a sketch of the frame to support an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper in landscape. So we make the Y axis on rails 13 inches long for the drawing instrument to travel. The X axis will be on rollers, and I'll move the paper 8 inches to scan the whole sheet, requiring 6 inches plus some buffer, so 18 inches total. So to start, I cut some aluminum scrap I had, I believe it came from a shower stall, into two 18 inch sections to provide the roller base. Then I cut two 13 inch lengths of 3 quarter inch aluminum L stock to form the ends. This is roughly squared and then drilled and bolted together to provide the base. By placing two bolts at each corner, the centermost holes drilled overly large, I was able to loosen them a tiny bit to adjust and get the base perfectly square. This worked very well and I recommend it for any similar build. For the roller base, I used two 6mm aluminum rods drilled and tapped at the end so that I can screw in a nut to hold the wheels on. These worked well as axles, however my rods were just a bit shorter than they needed to be requiring me to have to fiddle with spacers on the ends and allowing the wheels to tilt more than I like. I'll probably replace them in the future with longer axles. The table was cut from a sheet of quarter inch MDF to which I attached two eight inch lengths of angle aluminum for the axles to attach. These axle guides were drilled with six and a half millimeter holes about two inches from either end. For the Y axis, I took two pieces of 8 inch by 2 inch aluminum flat stock and taped them together. This way all the holes drilled would be in the exact same spot on both sides. I then marked where all the rails and holes should be. I also marked and cut a 2 by 4 inch flat of quarter inch PTE that will serve as the traveler and laser or pen mount. Drilling all the holes at once on the drill press went very easy. That was until the magic smoke came out of my old machine. RIP drill press. The flat stock pieces are mounted to either side of the center of the X-plane base. 8mm rods are pushed through and held in place with a set of 3 inch long angle aluminum mounted near the top that will also serve as a stepper motor and pulley mounts. On the plastic traveler, full pulleys are mounted that roll along the bars. The top two ones have the holes stretched into notches and that allow me to adjust the location of the rollers. A 15 inch section of half inch U stock is mounted to the very top to provide added stability. Here it is in action. To drive this, I chose to use these 28 BYJ unipolar stepper motors. These devices are very cheap. You can pick them up with the ULN 2003 driver boards for just a few dollars. However, they're very underpowered. I was dead set on making them work, and I did but it would have been better to have spent $20 on a pair of decent steppers and drivers. Here are the specs. A few notes. They're supposed to be 5 volts, but to get barely enough torque, I bumped it up to 12 volts. They seem to be handling this fine without getting warm. They're geared down 64 to 1, so it takes over 4,000 steps per revolution in half-step mode. They're very accurate, but not very fast. I posted example code from eShops.unl edu and also on my github in the description. Here's a simple sketch to run one stepper motor with Adreno. The concept is simple. You have four control signals and eight step combinations. The sketch tracks which step you're on and to move forward you alter the four signals as needed to the next step in the sequence. By cycling through the sequence incrementally the motor moves forward. By decrementing it, it moves backwards. A delay is needed between each step to allow the motor some time to react. Adjusting this delay sets the speed. Note there's an upper limit on how fast it can move. If the delay is too small, it skips steps, which appears like it's moving slower, or it stops moving at all and just hums. 
Playing with this, I was able to determine that my motors moved fastest with a 1.2 millisecond delay. We'll use this later to set the max speed. Once working, the stepper motors were mounted into the frame. I fashioned a spool to mount onto each motor shaft out of epoxy putty. A length of braided fishing line is cut about five times the length needed to span from the motor to the pulley mounted on the opposite side. This line is attached at, the, at its center to the spool. Then a little over one span length is wrapped around the spool in each direction so that when the spool turns, it reels in one end while letting out line on the other. Then the line is wrapped around the pulley and the ends are tied together to make one continuous loop. The loop is attached at its center to either the X table or the Y slider with a drilled bolt. I designed it so by turning the bolt you can tighten the line. It's important that this line is very tight. Any slack will cause you problems. This is also why I use braided line. Monofilament line is more able to stretch and give a little, which we don't want. To configure the Adreno to interpret G-code and draw shapes, I started with a tutorial on marginallyclever.com, linked in the description. As is, this wouldn't compile for me, and it had to be tuned a bit to remove errors for it and empty references. You can start with my updated version posted on GitHub. This is a very small and basic G-code reader with no linked libraries. The same base I used to do serial communication with the Raspberry Pi in my main fish tank controller series. The basic operation is such. It captures serial input with the monitor serial function. This is the only thing we have in our loop. If the monitor serial detects input, it triggers the process command function. This parses the command to find if it starts with a G or an M, and then based on what number follows, it calls the other functions to perform the requested action, which is the line or arc function. Any actual movement is done by the line function, which computes the distance between the requested point and the current position, and then redirects the stepper motors as needed to get there. To move the stepper motors, line calls M1 step and M2 step to move the X and Y axis respectively, passing only the direction it wishes them to move, forward or backwards. Each call is to move the stepper one step. So here we put our previous stepper motor movement code in, with only a small change to make it either move the next step or the previous step based on the direction that was passed. The line function also adds a pause between steps based on the feed rate as calculated in microseconds by the feed rate function. Make sure to adjust min step delay to the smallest delay your motor works with. To calibrate 00, zero I added two end stop switches. These are just simple buttons with a limit resistor and a pull down resistor connected to pins A4 and A5 on the Adreno. When pressed, the Adreno will read a voltage higher than zero. To set the 00, zero position on startup, I created a setup controller function. This simply moves the X and Y axis back a step until it detects the button pushes. Then it sets that position as 0, 0. To use this as a plotter, we need a pen holder that places the pen on the paper or retracts it. I choose to use a micro servo to move the pen, and we'll use the built-in servo library to control the servo with Adreno. I wrote this test script to validate everything is working right and to find proper settings for max movement. You can find the script on my GitHub in the description. I constructed the pen holder out of wood and a pen spring, but honestly it needs work. It's functional, but barely. The rod that holds the pen is too flexible and the tension between the writing instrument and the paper needs to be exact, and it's very hard to adjust. If you build one, make it sturdier and more adjustable. In the code, we set the servo max min values for pen up and pen down. The servo is moved by the laser power function and is called by process command to activate servo down or right on commands G1, 2, and 3 or up and deactivate on G0. Now that we have everything running, we need some G-code to draw. I used Inkscape to make a simple test drawing. Then you can use its built-in functions to create G-code from vector. To do this, once you have your vector drawing, use the tools under Extensions G-code tools. First, select Orientation Points, and then set the 0, 0 axis for your drawing. Then select Tools Library and apply the default tool. Edit the text overlay to set the feed rate speeds and other settings for this drawing. Now with the Select tool, select your drawing by dragging a box around it. You may have to do some fiddling to get it under the overlays. Then select Path to G-Code. 
In the window that pops up, select Preferences tab and apply the file name you wish to output ending in .gcode. Then the path that you wish to save it to on your local machine. And finally choose Round All Values to 4 Digits Post Process option. Then back on the first tab, Path to G-Code, click the Sort Paths to Reduce Distance checkbox and hit Apply. For now, I'm just using the Google Chrome G-Code Sender plugin to send the data from my PC to the Adreno over USB. To do so, open the plugin, go to Load File, click Open Local File, and then select the file we created with Inkscape. You should see it in the preview. Once ready, click Send to Machine to start printing. Here we go! I'll speed this up a bit. Next time, in part two, I'll be converting this to a laser engraver with an enclosure in an Adreno Nano. Make sure to click like if you like this and subscribe to see more. And until next time, thanks for watching.